And we are now live. So take it away, uh, take it away, Vern. Hello, everybody. Good evening to you. And welcome to our secondary suites presentation from Team Aid Real Estate. Um, just gonna kind of side bent a little bit. Um, you know, with everything that's going on right now, uh, it's hard to tell <clears throat> if this COVID, this pandemic, this quarantine is a blessing or a curse. We're gonna be sharing some information with you and we're gonna be showing you perhaps it's time for some change. Now that we're all at home, locked at home, um, as we have been all summer, we've been teaching people more and more and more because they're at home. And that's what we're gonna share with you tonight. Um, let's go to the next slide, um, please. A little bit about us, who are we? We're the largest and the only free real estate investment club here in Manitoba. In fact, I think at the current time, we're the, probably the only one that's doing uh, virtual events and regular events. We do uh, regular monthly uh, networking virtual events now um, with a bunch of like-minded individuals, as you can see on the panel, uh, investors of all types, service providers, those who want to learn about the markets. Uh, and we bring experts in the local markets. The Team Aid Real Estate Academy has over 100 students, protégés, all across Canada, and we're also into the United States. Uh, we have U.S. partners as well. We, we opened in um, New York State last year. Um, okay, next slide. What we do at our events, the, mo the monthly events are all free. When we're doing them live, they're free. When we're doing them online, they're free. We run workshops on all different aspects of real estate. Everything that you need to know about real estate, we'll run a workshop on. Um, the list is just like humongous. Uh, everything that we do, all aspects of the real estate investment. We help you find and build your power team. We have access, you have access to all of the resources that we have at Team Aid Real Estate Academy, plus every coach that you see on the panel has resources themselves, all the tradespeople, painters, carpenters, anybody that you need to get the deal done. Uh, we help you with your joint ventures, networking, we help you find the money for the deals, we help you find the deals, and it's all based on the academy, like a post-secondary education, a bachelor's degree, master's degree, PhD, however you wanna go at it. Depends where you wanna be. And we are not a catch and release program. We don't sell you a coaching kit and sell you the tools that you need and uh, give you a pump you up and go rah, rah, rah and tell you you'll be okay. We don't do that. We work with you through every single deal that you do. We work with you through every single deal you do. We help you with your due diligence, run the numbers, make sure everything's working for you. We have no annual fee. You get a one-on-one -on -one mentorship, coaching, field training, you're part of the family, and you, you get branded with the Team Aid Real Estate Academy name. So you're part of the team. Next one. Okay, this is a little bit to show you a little bit about our strategies. Um, this is a brochure. Uh, that we normally fill out at our live events. So at the end of this, you're going to be asked um, to, or we'll be contacting you. Um, you can let us know if you want to set a strategy session. During our strategy sessions, we're going to talk to you about all different things. Whether you want to uh, learn to buy, fix, and sell properties, rehab them, uh, or buy and hold, buy, fix, refinance, and rent. All this stuff, rent to own, financing, joint ventures. We teach you all the aspects of negotiation. And what we also teach you is how to control real estate with no money. I kid you not, people, with no money. And we'll show you some examples of that. Okay, we guarantee you, you get your first deal done. Okay, many of us go beyond that. It's not just your first deal. 
we want you to know everything that we know. We're an advisory uh, consultant to you. We share our knowledge with you. We teach you how to apply it. We share our experiences with you. We give you the confidence and we build up your momentum and we give you a lifetime membership with our academy. Uh, plus we have a chat support system where at any point in time, if you had a question, you could put it out there and either one of the coaches or any one of the other members can answer or, or give you somebody that can help you in your situation, whatever's going on. So it's not like you're trying to phone your coach once a month, like the, the, the uh, uh, gurus who come through town and they give you the one phone call a month, which is usually with somebody they hired to answer your questions. And it's not an experienced person. They're reading answers from a program and that's what you paid for. We are here. You can contact us individually, one-on-one. -on -one. You have all of our contact information and we're not going anywhere. Next slide, please. This, is what, this one really gets me. I can't do that. I hear that so many times from people. And this young lady here, imagine her trying to pick that up before she ever lifted a weight. She could not do that. And the same thing applies to real estate when some people consider doing it and not without any knowledge. Same thing happens. All of your beliefs limit you. Your words limit you. Your thoughts limit you. Your emotions limit you. Your relationships, everything limits you. So we have to break out of that and open our minds and that's who we're looking for. Anyone with an open mind, we can teach you how to succeed in this. But you're going to need training just like that individual did, okay? We help you design the lifestyle that you want. Myself, I prefer to go where I want, when I want, with who I want, and why I want. Now my wife says, with the wife, and I do. So you need to see what kind of life you want to have, your future lifestyle. This is what it's about. You need to speak to the eventuality of the lifestyle you will design. You have to think about it. Give it some design, give it some structure. Uh, being able to design how to achieve that lifestyle, step by step by step, and make your lifestyle happen. You want to live on the beaches? That's, that's a great goal. Okay? You want to help dozens and dozens, hundreds of people change their financial path? You can do it with real estate. Next slide. Okay, I'm just going to do some sponsor shout outs. Uh, Daryl Walsh is online with us tonight. Uh, he's with Royal LePage, our, our uh, realtor sponsor. Uh, wonderful um, asset to have on board. Just a ton of information. Anything that we need with regards to properties, any knowledge, stuff like that, past histories. Daryl's right there with it. And he, I believe he'll be doing a market update a little later tonight. Uh, also, uh, Jazz Sani, chartered accountant, great, great people to work with, easy to work with. Um, and they understand the real estate investing perfectly. I love working with them. Uh, Daniel Lemke with Performance Pro Sites, a little bit of a twist uh, to uh, creating websites where now you can do it for a, a small monthly fee instead of a big chunk of cash up front. Uh, and if anything goes wrong with it, they fix it. Taking care of all for you. Okay. Christian Narcisco, Usual Media, <laughs> Usual Media. I like that name. I have to think about it every time I have to say it. So any media that you need, any media work, give Christian a call. Uh, Garrett Wong, Upper Edge Property Management, tremendous source of, of information. Tremendous. He's right on top of the market. Any information that we need, uh, we get it from him. Ray Penner, Ray Penner Photography, uh, when we're doing live events and sometimes even on these events, we're doing pictures that were done by Ray. Uh, Brendan Mahatu uh, with Levine Cabman Go Law Corporation. He's our legal sponsor. And uh, I'm very, very impressed with Brendan um, since he was very, very young. 
he schooled himself and trained himself to be a real estate lawyer and was very, very uh, helpful with his advice and will opine any situation for you. Uh, very available to all of us. Alvin Bali uh, with uh, Caesar Stone Canada and Deluxe Paints. This is our, our one of our, our great sponsors. We use him every single time that we're doing a property. Just about, uh, just about everything that we do needs paid. So uh, Don Posner with Trusted Financial. We have a built-in uh, financial company that will help everybody. Uh, and a shout out to all of them. This could not happen without these sponsors, people. This is why our live events and our virtual events are always free. And there is uh, a picture of all of the coaches um, and several of our, our prime protégés, families. That's the family of Team Aid Real Estate. Now, what's next for you? Uh, some results. Um, do we have someone coming in to do results here? Please? Oh, my goodness. Who's that? Oh, that's me. <laughs> that's you, Vern. Yeah. Why do I do this? There's the number one reason right there in that black dress and that white outfit. Incidentally, the, us running there in the um, uh, black shirts and stuff, we were running in the Rock and Roll Marathon Series in Las Vegas. Uh, at mile four, we pulled in, got married, and then finished the marathon. This is us crossing the finish line. Um, and then we came home uh, to our wedding dance celebration. <laughs> and my wife made this beautiful picture with the hearts on it. And why do I invest for family? For, to create generational wealth, something that will be here when we're gone. Something that will carry on and on and on. And uh, as we get into advanced training, uh, tonight we're just a uh, preliminary discussion on our business. Uh, should we get into advanced training, then we'll be finding out, um, going into different aspects of it, on how can we allow that generational wealth to stay there when we're gone. And that's what it's all about. That is what creates multi, multi millionaires. And it goes on and on and on. And uh, we can show you how to legally do that and uh, um, pay, pay the taxes forward, sort of thing. Okay. Uh, right now, I'm gonna, uh, is Daryl going to do the update for the month of August? Daryl Walsh, realtor extraordinary. Daryl's here. I have at her, Daryl. Take it away, Daryl. All right. Well, good evening and welcome, everybody. Uh, good to see some of you on the screen. And I guess we won't be seeing you in person for a little while, but um, I'm here to give you the market update report. And this is for the month of August. As we're almost through September, we will have the September numbers in another week or two. Can we go to the next slide, please? All right, so this is kind of an overview of our statistics. Here we have detached, attached, and condominiums. For the month of August, active listings and detached. So these are going to be your single family detached homes. They could be bungalows. They could be two stories, one and a half. We had almost 2,000 active listings, and we did approximately 1,325 sales. So huge in the detached family homes. Average price was $349,247. We'll go to the same slide, but just over to the next call. Nope, back up. Next column, which is attached homes. So these are gonna be your side-by-sides or your townhouses. A substantially less amount of those uh, active listings, 172, and we did 114 sales. Price is lower because these properties are at a little lower value. And then the last column there is our active listing in condominium, 794, and we did 214 sales. There's a lot of condominiums on the market, um, but they're not selling nearly as much as our detached homes. So if you're looking for a flip, that's maybe the area you want to go in is detached homes, but there's money to be made in any one of these categories. Okay, next slide. All right, residential detached. We just talked about this. This is specifically for the month of August. And I want you to pay attention to the number here and then the number on the next slide. So the average price in August was 349,000, roughly 247, the average square foot. Go to the next slide. And this is going to be our year to date, 336,426. Can you go back one? 
So 349 to 336. So our average price basically has gone up substantially for the month of August compared to year to date. So we had a very good month in August. Okay, moving forward. Now we're here on our average, or sorry, residential attached again. This is just for the month of August. Not a lot of sales in the attached side-by-sides or townhouses. Average price was 283.61. Go to the next slide and we were gonna compare 268. So again, we see a substantial increase in price for the month of August. And the reason why we're seeing these larger increases is because our market is somewhat restricted a little bit because of the COVID, we're still at about 25% less product inventory. So if you're a buyer, you might be having a hard time finding a property on the MLS. I've got a handful of clients that are with teammate that we have found properties on the MLS and we've got them at really good prices but other strategies which your coaches will tell you about how to find those properties off market. Because there's less inventory, we seem to have a substantial amount of buyers, meaning that we're getting bidding wars on a lot of our properties. So it's hard for us to pick and choose the really good deals. On the flip side of that, if you're selling a rental property, you're getting multiple offers. I've had properties where we've had anywhere from 11 to 18 offers on a single property and sold substantially more. I'm talking $50,000, $60,000 over listed price. And listed price is what I recommend you sell a property at. When you hit it out of the park like that and you get $50,000 over, I think you're a happy, happy investor. You've done a good job. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Condos seem to be sluggish and they have been for the past five to seven years. What does that mean from an investment standpoint? Well, you may be able to pick up a condo for a better price than you could have five years ago or seven years ago. Um, those condos are, are still basically keeping even pace as far as their, their growth. You're not, they're not growing a lot, but, um, you can buy it at 10 years ago's price, if that makes any sense to you. So the average price per condos are 249.63. Let's jump ahead to the next slide. It's gone up a little bit. It's gone up $9,000 on the year. So you've, you've still done okay, but we're not comparing the same condo that sold in July or August to the condo that sold in January, unless it's identical, which is hard to do. All right, next slide, please. Condo sales report for August, 2020. In the middle, you see that 7.5% sales over last year. So we've had a little bit more of an inventory pickup. Our average price has gone up about 8.5%, but our listings are down. So there's less condos on the market than there was last year. So that's basically what this slide is describing. And the square footage, you can figure out 1085. Okay, next slide. This is a great slide. There's a lot of information here. So this pie represents 100% of our market going from properties that are up to $100,000. So anything from zero to $100,000 right at the very top in that small sliver of pink. And then we're going clockwise to the right. You've got properties between 100 and 149,000. And below that number, the 100 to 149 gives you your percentage. 4.83% of the market was in that a number. Uh, and, and moving along, you can see how the numbers go up. So the biggest segment of the market you can see are going to be houses priced between 250 to 299, 300 to 349, and 350 to 399. So if you're doing the burst strategy, if you're doing the rental flip strategy, and you're starting off in the small segment of the market, maybe if you can get up to the other larger segments of the market, certainly not for the first time home buyers. I don't recommend going in my, oh, I found a house for $400,000. I'm going to do a rental flip on it. Unless you really know what you're doing, start at the lower end, but work your way up to the middle to the, the I don't want to say high end, the 500 to 749,000, but the other areas of the market, the largest segment of our market where you're going to get the biggest return for your investment um, based on market segment is going to be anywhere from 250,000 to 350,000. I hope that makes sense. 
Okay, I think we've got the last slide coming up. Yes, this is me in many places. Um, social distancing, now anytime we're out in the public, we have to wear a mask. If you're going to come and see me at my office, you wear a mask when you come in. We have hand sanitizers. We are into phase two. So we basically rebounded with COVID, unfortunately, but we'll see how things shake out. That's me riding the leaf and that's me uh, playing in the backyard because I'm going to have to be raking a lot of leaves. That's it for me right now. If anybody has any questions, you can uh, directly chat with me here or you can email me, Daryl Walsh at royalapage.ca and I would gladly answer any of your questions. Thank you very much for your time this evening. Thank you, Daryl. Okay, um, who is giving uh, Brendan's update tonight? Is that you, Keith? I believe Valen was actually going to speak, uh, okay. or at least Brendan asked that Valen say something nice about him. But hey, <laughs> anyone can say something nice about Brendan. Oh, that's He's a nice guy. Uh, well, while we're waiting for, oh, there's, there's uh, Valen. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, well, I'll start saying something nice about uh, Brendan because he deserves it. Yeah. Uh, I think the best, the best way is to talk about something uh, personal that he handled for me. And it'll give you a great indication of just the type of service provider and partner Brennan will be for you if you decide to have him as your uh, you know, legal counsel. And that'll probably be the best decision you make this year in that department because I, I'm, invol I'm involved um, you know, fairly recently with a commodities transaction internationally. And a lot of times when it comes to international deals, it ties into immigration a lot. And so uh, there was a need for me uh, very last minute. It was already well past business hours. And I asked uh, Brendan to prepare a letter for urgent travel with regards to one of my partners going um, overseas as you might guess, urgent travel and going overseas is met with a lot of restrictions due to everything. And that letter was vital, uh, albeit it was very last note, you know, last minute. I didn't think he, he, he would actually be able to prepare and get it done late into the night. But um, bright and early in the morning, it was uh, fully done. And I was able to get it off just in the nick of time uh, to... Uh, the immigration representative we were talking with and uh, then uh, there was a deadline because we were doing an application for the visa and he got it done and we got a positive re uh, response in that they uh, said that they would be working diligently to get that visa approved because the letter was the last uh, condition or requirement they needed so that's an indication of the type of and level of service you're going to be seeing from Brendan, uh, you know, I, I don't want everyone to go uh, emailing him and calling him at night to do things, but uh, just goes to show what he's willing to do for you when you have him on your side. So nothing's better than, uh, you know, personal testimonial like that, uh, that you can hear and expect, you know, for yourself. Mm -hmm. So definitely reach out to Brendan for all your legal services, real estate uh, mainly, but uh, he's helping me across the board. So uh, thanks, everyone, and hope that helps you make the decision to get along with Brendan. Thank you, Valen. Hey, um, student success stories. Uh, is Nelson stepping in for this? Keith? Yes? Sure, I can, I can yeah, step in sure. really quick for this one, guys. Hey, everybody. Glad everybody could make it out tonight on this kind of uh, – Druzy kind of weird Monday. I think the last of summer was with us on Saturday. And uh, thanks, Vern, for taking the helm tonight and kind of guiding everybody through the, the meeting tonight. We're just happy that we can have people join us tonight. And we're looking forward to more meetings together when we can get together. We're always going to make sure we get together, whether it's like this or hopefully eventually in person. But we do want to recognize that uh, it's important to learn, always learning. And as we go into the fall and the winter, a lot of people are looking back at their year and saying, hey, what do I want to learn to finish off this year? What do I want to learn going into 2021? So I want to just congratulate everybody who took the time to come tonight and learn something new. 
Uh, just wanted to shout out to Manchu. I don't even know if she's online tonight or not, but she did just a great job this last year. She was investor of the month twice. And um, Manchu and I met about three years ago and she already owned a few buy and holds and said, I want you to teach me to flip. And uh, I said, sure, I can teach you to flip houses. And she just has a great eye for style and and for designing and she just loves the excitement part of planning a flip and making it a beautiful home for somebody so we went through that and she did a few flips uh and and had a great time doing them uh i encouraged her to come back to buy and holds and not to leave that aside i think everybody knows that uh flipping houses never made anybody a millionaire but buy and hold certainly has and so she's got just a great portfolio of buy and hold properties, great experience with flipping properties now. Uh, just her whole background coming from an amazing story, arriving in Canada and having to create an amazing life for herself. So super proud of Manchu and all of the success that she's had in 2020. Her goal was to have 20 rental units by 2020. And guess what, folks? She hit that mark. So uh, we're really proud of Manchu and everything she's done. Thank you, Nelson. Um, oh, and here we have Roldan. Roldan's amazing. He called me up and uh, I didn't even know he bought another house. And he's like, coach, I bought another house. Can you come and help me plan the renovation? I'm doing another burr on this one. And I thought, oh, Roldan, you're amazing. And uh, I'm sure any of the other coaches would attest to the fact as well. You know, as we start working with our students, there's a lot of anxiety at first on, hey, how am I going to do this deal? How do I do the renovation? But as they start buying properties, all of a sudden we hear less and less from the students because as Vern talked about a little bit earlier, that momentum comes, that confidence comes. And it doesn't mean that they don't need their coach anymore, but they start having the confidence of being able to do it on their own. And I think all of us celebrate the fact when we see our students doing that. So Roldan bought this awesome house. Uh, it was an amazing mixture of retro and modern. And uh, here we are looking, found some pretty, uh, funky carpet down underneath hidden away but uh, he's got a great property there fully developed basement very little renovation going into a great burr on this one got it so far below market value that he's going to be able to pull his money out very easily and have a zero down deal once again and so he just keeps recycling the same money over and over and over again people say you can't do that you can't buy real estate with no money nobody said there's no money we're just talking about recycling the same money over and over again. Uh, and, you know, uh, Roldan and some of my other students have been so successful in their burrs. Not only did they succeed in pulling all the money out that they put in, sometimes there's actually a payoff. And then you get a bonus for having done such a great project to the community. You get paid back more than you actually invested. Someone say that you, you can't do that. That's not fair. You got paid more than you actually bought the house for and renovated it for. Yes. You do, as a matter of fact. And there isn't really a mathematical formula for that because your return is greater than an investment of nothing. You're making a return on an investment effectively of zero dollars of your own money. So folks, it certainly can be done. These are people that are doing it. Manchu, Roldan, Patrick, many other students. Uh, here's Herman and Sarah. I think they're online tonight. If they are, give us a wave. Uh, say something in the, in, the, uh, in the messages, but so proud of them. Uh, they did a great job. That's their, their son, Nico, and my son, Levi, there. They bought this beautiful duplex. It's a block away from the HSC. Great let rental location, great building, great layout. And they're just in the process of finishing up uh, their, their renovation on this one. I'm eager to see the end product. The whole kitchen plan was happening. We went through the whole house top to bottom, talk strategies. And uh, they've got just a beautiful house there. That is going to be amazing investment not only for them, but for their son and their daughter as well. And they're going to be able to benefit from that in that generational wealth that Vern was talking about earlier. Uh, and I guess they got so excited about their first deal that they did before this one that they called me up and said, Nelson, we bought another house. And this one is the one that they bought, the second one. So I didn't even know they had bought this one. And they said, it's a done deal. We removed the conditions. So I'd already gone through another one with them. And instead of buying one house in a month, they actually bought two in the same month. So very proud of them for everything they're doing on this one as well. Great investment, going to be some great cash flow coming out of this one. And uh, once again, they didn't think one was enough. They went to two. So very proud of the success they've had. Okay. 
Thank you, Nelson. That was wonderful. Just before I introduce our, our wonderful speaker for the night, uh, I just want to throw a, another little shout out. Um, it certainly is uh, a blessing in this year. And women empower women. I must say that. I must say it. Not only Manchu, two-time investor of the month with Team Aid. Every month we give, um, uh, we acknowledge the investor of the month, who is most active, who is most on top of the business, who is on top of their game. And Manchu is one of them. Another one is Alla Bernstein. Alla added to her portfolio one purchase, 28 doors, and another purchase, nine doors this year. Think about that. That's 37 doors. Wow. Manchu, 20 doors. They, Amazing. These women are leaders and they empower other women. Nelson, you were going to comment there? I was just saying that's amazing. Yeah, I agree with you 100%, Fern. Oh, just, just knock my socks off. And I'm her coach so, th three years with her, and she's added 42 doors to her portfolio. Uh, just amazing, amazing ladies, amazing ladies. And with that note, I'm going to introduce our speaker for the night, uh, someone I haven't met yet, but someone who is very much on top of secondary suites and how they can really change your investment game. This, I want to hear. This is something everybody should know about because it really changes the game. It adds profit to any situation if you're watching for it. Steve Brady? Uh, I am, but I think I'm having some technical difficulties with Keith. <laughs> yeah, we're just tr we're just trying to sort screen. out a little screen sharing okay, thing here. Okay, well I can babble while you're doing that. <laughs> yeah, if you want, if you want to babble, I'm going to see if I can turn on Stephen's screen. Yeah, um, in in earlier today and and over the last month or so, we've all posted several videos of results of our students, um, and most of the time, uh, what what I like best is when somebody's getting into the buy and holds. I mean, yeah, um, we, we have a lot of our students that flip and, and uh, um, some of my first year prodigies are making $100,000 doing flips every year. Um, some of them have done four or five in the first year and now we're getting into the buy and holds. But like Nelson said, the generational wealth comes from holding on to your properties and stabilizing them and structuring them so that you can control it forever with none of your own money. There's always money involved. And when we talk no money down or no money in the deal, we're just meaning none of your own money. And when you can control real estate that way, you can control hundreds of millions of dollars of real estate. I kid you not people, and it's as simple as one or two or three per year. If you're in your 20s, there we go. Looks like we're in business, Steve. I'll turn it over to Mr. Stephen Ulrich. Take it away. All right, thanks for having me, guys. <clears throat> yeah, so um, when Keith originally uh, asked me to talk, he, uh, we were kind of talking about the, a presentation I prepared and did for another real estate investment group. So. Uh, it will touch about the secondary suites, but it also talks a, a bit about multifamily development as well. This is an area I've pretty much been focused on for the last two or three years. Uh, I recently completed my own sixplex, have another one to sell for bids right now, and working on an 11plex that I'll be uh, hoping to start come springtime, if not earlier. Uh, what I've been doing is helping a lot of people uh, uh, go through the process with the city to uh, start multifamily projects. Uh, any, anything from, you know, a, a house with secondary suite all the way up to uh, an 18 unit building at this moment, uh, even commercial mixed use, 16 units residential with three storefronts on the main floor. But uh, anyways, let's get into it. So what is multifamily development? As I kind of mentioned, uh, duplexes, secondary suites, triplexes, commercial mixed uses. These are just some of the examples of uh, multifamily developments that you might see around the neighborhoods. 
Uh, some of the recent recent projects I've done, like I mentioned, uh, um, I, I do take on new builds and renos, but I also mostly deal with uh, secondary suite conversions, uh, duplex conversions, which we'll talk about later. And then also the new pl new build uh, plexes, you know, uh, whether they are a duplex, triplex, fourplex, sixplex, nineplex. And like I said, commercial mixed use, those are the projects that I'm kind of focused on right now with the design and development. <clears throat> uh, oops. So here was an example of a fourplex I did for a client. Uh, this is in the St. Boniface neighborhood. Uh, it's uh, four suites, basically at all four corners of the building. We started this project uh, with basically a shack on the site and it's almost uh, nearing completion. I believe the owners turn in and over in uh, late November. Uh, so tonight we'll start about, or we'll talk about where to start, what to consider, and who to talk to. Uh, that's the key uh, key one there that you'll definitely want to make note of. A lot of people uh, who have ideas of uh, developing uh, sites for multifamily, first place to start is talking to uh, uh, the city, and we'll go into that. Now we'll talk about the conditional use and variances, the process, some of the costs and fees. Uh, some example projects, and then we'll talk about the duplex and secondary suites. So first thing is uh, property and zoning. <clears throat> a lot of people come to me and ask, you know, I want to do a multifamily property. Where do I start? And you got to find the right property with the right zoning. Out of the zoning uh, bylaws, <clears throat> this is a table, principal use table. Uh, you could see on R1 and R2 properties that I've highlighted there's these little uh, uh, columns and rows here that kind of symbolize what you're allowed to do. For instance, in R1, uh, you are permitted to do a dwelling single family detached. You're also permitted to do a secondary suite attached. The P stands for permitted, the C stands for conditional use. <clears throat> What's important to note is the secondary suite detached, uh, that would be an example of like a garage laneway house. Uh, right now, that is a conditional use to apply for that. I believe the city is trying to push to uh, make these permitted, but at the moment they are conditional, so uh, you can't just go ahead and start development right away. Under the R2, if you look, you could see a dwelling multifamily is conditional. Uh, and then also permitted would be the, your single family, your two family, as well as uh, secondary suites. You could find more information at zoning at the, uh, the website link that I've provided there. So permitted versus conditional, what does that mean? Permitted use, uh, that means you can develop certain types barring any variances, of course. Um, conditional use basically means you may be able to develop it and subject to application. This is where you really need to get involved with the city planner to make sure they support your project. So what to consider uh, zoning bylaws for one, uh, like I mentioned, barring any variances, uh, the zoning bylaws, um, there might be some examples such as side yard setbacks or front yard setbacks where you could develop a building, but maybe there's a 35 foot frontage uh, requirement that would push your building far back that maybe you can only build something as big as a duplex on versus a fourplex or sixplex. Uh, so that would require variances. So knowing some zoning bylaws um, will definitely help. There's also uh, bylaws related to parking, plantings, um, yeah, height, uh, <laughs> a whole list of things. Uh, uh, so you don't need to know it all. It's a very long document, but just knowing some of the general bylaws may uh, help you when you're looking at properties and what to consider for uh, multifamily development. Uh, city planner support. <clears throat> this is very key. Around the city, there's uh, area planners uh, designated to each part. Uh, you know, there's some for St. Boniface, some for uh, uh, Transcona, East Kildona and Elmwood, some for the North End area, um, some for uh, Charleswood, St. James, and as well as uh, the Fort Gary, Fort Rouge, up to city center area. So if you find a property in one of those neighborhoods, you want to contact the right planner to make sure that you're talking to the right person uh, that will be looking at your property and see if they will support what you're planning to do. Uh, another big item which uh, has been taking more and more notice lately is the neighborhood and area. Uh, we do have a residential infill draft guideline that's currently out. It was released last Friday or two Fridays ago, or sorry, last Friday. Um, 
and it, it is a result of the citizens and the neighbors. Uh, this is something that could really impact your project, whether it be splitting a lot to build two houses with secondary suites uh, or building, you know, a, an 18 unit commercial multifamily building. Um, getting signatures of support will really help and making sure that the neighbors in your na neighborhood really support the, your vision or your goal for that site. So who to talk to, uh, like I mentioned, the city planners, they assess the property and provide support. Sometimes it's not always what you want to hear. Uh, you know, I uh, approached the city planners with a proposal for a nine unit building and they came back and said it was just too dense for the neighborhood. They, we ended up settling on a six unit building and uh, it ended up being a successful project. Uh, and also speaking consultants, designers, other developers that are experienced with projects. Uh, there is quite a few out there that have done these types of buildings. Uh, you know, just picking their brain and almost seeing them like kind of like what you guys are talking about mentorship or, or talking to them about, you know, maybe some insights or tips, things like that. I know I've spoken to several people about multifamily developments and, uh, you know, I, I was a great source to these people, I believe. And, uh, you know, I'm not the only one. So, you know, finding many of the, the other developers out there, uh, you might get some uh, good information from. So the conditional use slash variance process. <clears throat> so the application form kind of says it all, you know, let me just bring it up here. Uh, sorry, one second. Can you see that Keith? Sorry. Uh, no, we're still looking at this okay. slide, the conditional use slide. Okay, one second. I'm just gonna do a new share here, uh, screen. Okay, can you see that now? Yeah. Yes, we can see that. Just probably want to zoom in a little bit on it. Sure, yeah, let me just, where is that zoom in? I just have to change the panel over. So this is straight from the city of Winnipeg website. And a conditional use means a building or land that may be unique in its characteristics. Uh, um, yada, 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 I won't read it all. You could obviously read it. Uh, but in it, what, what I will point out is the critical items. Uh, is down here where you need a bunch of documents to submit to the city. Uh, within it is plans of uh, floor plans, site plan, landscaping plans, um, etc. Uh, one of the other key items here that I mentioned earlier is the letters of support. This is becoming more and more, even though it says it may be required, it's becoming more and more uh, of an item that needs to be required. So let's just jump back. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, um, even taking a look and reading the conditional use or variance forms will help you uh, understand a lot about the process. Um, like I showed you, you require a lot of information. It takes about two to three weeks to assemble on the, on the low end. It could take you anywhere from four to four weeks to 12 weeks if, if it really uh, took some time to especially develop plans. Oops, uh, let me go back there. Um, status of title BLC will take you about two, three weeks itself. Uh, in the meantime, you could sometimes have your plans developed, uh, whatnot, but uh, it is a lengthy process, that's for sure. <clears throat> the typical process, once you do uh, prepare everything, you will have to submit it to uh, uh, the zoning officer. <clears throat> they'll review it for any variances and they'll submit it to the planner and then you'll pay a bunch of fees. <clears throat> and then once again, you'll wait some more time for the city. And then there will also be a public notice where you'll have to post the yellow boards for a minimum two weeks. The city has recently changed this process with the whole COVID. So the boards are still posted for two weeks, but the old process, you would post it for two weeks and go to a board of adjustment meeting. Now there is no board of adjustment. Uh, I understand it's coming back. I'm just not sure when, but uh, they, the city basically does an internal board of adjustment and then they'll give you the, the yellow boards, which now has become just the appeal period. <clears throat> the board of adjustment hearing would typically uh, commence after those, uh, the two week wait on the site. And that this is where the chance for the neighbors to appeal or, or really uh, I've seen people show up from other neighborhoods of the city appealing uh, certain projects. Uh, for whatever reason, um, don't want to go into some of my thoughts and opinions of it. <laughs> I get quite frustrated with some of them, but um, uh, they do show up in droves sometimes to appeal uh, certain sites being uh, uh, proposed for development. 
Uh, typically at the Board of Adjustment, there will also be the board members, which are usually ex-planners or ex-city uh, officials, uh, sometimes even uh, university grads of uh, um, civil design or, or um, um, planning school. Um, and then also the city planners will be there to basically support or go against you for your, uh, uh, your development application, whether it's conditional use or variance. Uh, what's very important though, uh, the conditional use and the variance, which you will see, uh, relies on these four topics, A, B, C, and D, has to be consistent with plan Winnipeg and the applicable secondary plans within it. Uh, it does not create substantial adverse effects on uh, basically the neighborhood and the, the, the water and waste, uh, things like that, uh, is a minimum modification to the zoning bylaw uh, required to relieve the injurious effect, which is kind of a, a very gray uh, uh, requirement because I, I know I've submitted applications where I've had nine variances, which is no minimum modification for sure. Uh, and then also lastly, is compatible with the area in which the property is to be affected. Um, so for instance, if, if you're going to be developing a 20 unit building uh, mid block where it's nothing but single family homes next door, you might have a challenge because it may not be compatible with the area. <clears throat> and so here's the variance application. Uh, like I said, it's basically identical to the conditional use. A conditional use just goes back to that use table where for instance, in an R2 where you are uh, typically permitted to develop a duplex, uh, barring one variance requirement, um, uh, you wouldn't, or sorry, you would need a conditional use to apply for a triplex or anything more on that R2 property. So for an R2 triplex, you would actually have to apply for a conditional use and variances likely. <clears throat> Uh, so moving on, there is an appeal period. It used to be about four weeks, but now it's basically a two week period. Uh, and this is, like I said, where it's a chance to delay your project. Um, what happens after the appeal period is you get scheduled in for a council meeting where you will now go present, sorry, you kind of have to argue your points to the counselor. Uh, the appeal meeting is more for the neighbors to have their fair say to the uh, counselors. And so they actually get to speak twice. They get to refute the application. You get to refute them as the applicant. And then they will come back and refute your any additional arguments you presented. Uh, it's not really fair to the applicants. Um, uh, there's been some concerns about it. Uh, counselors have even made concerns about it not being fair to the counselors to basically be uh, uh, become the scapegoats for these projects. Uh, so I think they are looking at making changes, but for now, this is kind of the pro uh, process we uh, get to live with. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people don't realize how much the fees are involved as well. So I just wanted to bring that up in this application. So for a DCUB, uh, conditional use B, um, which is usually related to single family homes, uh, it's, it's a lot cheaper than the C or D. Uh, you can see the costs are about $600 for the application. Uh, the post use is just if you establish it and then you get caught and have to apply for the conditional use later. For most applications of multifamily, you're gonna be looking at a conditional use C. <clears throat> so just for the conditional use application alone, it's about $2,700. And like I mentioned in this slide, there's typically all these variances uh, required for conditional use applications. <clears throat> uh, variance costs, uh, <clears throat> for a variance B, uh, these are mostly related to single family homes. Uh, you could see the cost before construction of about $600 plus each additional $200, $220 uh, cost. So when I mentioned, uh, you know, having a project that had nine variances, I was looking at uh, several thousand dollars because the first one was $660, but then the other eight were at $220 each. Added up significantly. Um, <clears throat> for the variance C or D, this is where uh, you're mostly looking at multifamily developments. F uh, for instance, right down here where it says other residential exa example multifamily dwelling and commercial uses. This is where it really hurts the pocketbook because the first variance is $2,200 and each additional one is $556. So that, that example I gave you of that nine variances was actually for a multifamily. So the first one was 2,200 and the other eight were at $556 each. 
uh, like I said, it was several thousand dollars by the end of it. Uh, project example, a tri conversion. Some of you guys may be familiar with this. Uh, it was a local real estate investor here in town. Uh, so what we started with was a standard up down duplex with a shared unfinished basement. It was, well, sorry, it was partially uh, finished. It had, uh, you know, a laundry space, uh, a couple furnaces, and I think a bathroom. The site was zoned R2 and it was a two story with basements. The suites were typically on the main floor and the second floor. Uh, and the adjacent properties were duplexes and triplexes. So it did uh, fit within the neighborhood. We applied for the conditional use and this actual project had no variances. The first time without, uh, it was really interesting because the, the typical variances for a multifamily project, you get hit with having um, a buffering requirement to the residential properties behind you. But in this situation, we had a park behind us. So we actually were able to not need the variance for that for the first time. Um, so it was just a conditional use application. We met all the other zoning bylaws, so we didn't need any variances. There was no appeals because the neighborhood was, um, you know, uh, basically all duplex and triplexes to begin with and all renters. So renters typically don't appeal. It's more the, the, um, the homeowners. And the process took about three months of the application. The conditional use costs were about $2,700 and the variance costs just happened to be zero here. Here is an example of the basement floor plan. Uh, the, the dash lines are what we kind of demolished. And then this is what we propose to do a, a three bedroom, uh, one bath with in-suite washer dryer, kitchen, living, dining area. <clears throat> Here's another project example of a sixplex new build. Uh, the existing house was in poor condition. The site was zoned R2 and the building was one story. There was adjacent properties that were duplexes and triplexes, but we were pitching a, a sixplex. Well, this one actually, this is the example where we did pitch nine units, but discussing it with the city planners, uh, we ended up settling on six, unit, six units. Uh, we had several variances and they mostly related to that parking and buffering requirements. Uh, but for the most, this was the site development here. We had a two and a half story, uh, six unit building, six parking stalls on the back. <clears throat> we applied for the conditional use and variances and there was actually one appeal and it delayed the project about an extra one and a half months. Uh, so overall the process from start to finish took about just under six months. The conditional use costs were about 2,700 and the variance costs were about 38. And the construction started April, 2019. Uh, that was the artist rendering of the project. Uh, an interior shot as well. Uh, so secondary suites. Um, I've had a few uh, uh, clients come to me and, and ask me to do secondary suite renovations. And then I've had a few that have come to me and, and said, you know, I want to do a duplex conversion of a single family home. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, what's interesting, though, is on all these duplex sites, they were zoned R2 or RMF. Um, that allows uh, multifamily uh, uh, development. <clears throat> so I just kind of wanted to kind of break down the differences between the two uh, because I, I felt that uh, when I did this presentation originally, I felt that uh, people were struggling with, should I do a duplex or should I do a secondary suite? So I'm gonna touch a bit about the secondary suites and also about duplexes related to the city zoning. Uh, so I do have to make some assumptions uh, related to the differences. Uh, and that's gonna be R2 and R1 zoning only, not RMF or C zoning, which uh, do allow um, you know, the multifamily homes but we're just gonna to stick to R2 and R1 zoning. And we're gonna consider attached secondary suites only, not detached. So the zoning differences <clears throat> is the lot area for R2. In order to do a duplex, you, you need minimum 2,500 square feet per suite of lot area, otherwise it's a variance. There is no lot area requirements in secondary suites. You are permitted to do them on any R1 or R2 or any R property for that matter there would be no variance requirements uh, related to the lot areas. <clears throat> the building code differences. 
<clears throat> the area of sweets is basically uh, uh, the one area that usually hits people um, the worst, I'll say. Uh, there is a maximum 800 square foot requirement for secondary suites, but the city also has uh, additional rules where they make you measure the, um, the, um, the floor area of the buildings. Uh, and then they take the lesser of 33% of the total floor area or 800 square feet, which everyone's less. Uh, in addition to the building code differences, um, there's the continuous fire separation versus smoke separation. In duplexes or triplexes, um, like legal um, multifamily suites, you are required to provide a continuous fire separation. <clears throat> and a continuous sound separation, which I didn't list. Whereas in secondary suites, it's just a smoke seal, which typically can be provided by drywall that's mudded tape paint. For the continuous fire separation, it's a little bit more difficult to achieve, especially in the existing structures. Uh, there's also an STC difference of about 50, which has to be continuous, like I mentioned, versus STC 43. Um, then there's also some requirements relating to spatial separation, exposing building face and window area percentages, uh, which, which gets very detailed. I, I don't think I'll go into too much detail on that. <clears throat> uh, this was an example of a project on Home Street where I got a call uh, earlier on. Uh, a real estate investor asked me, you know, I got this two story home. It's gutted. Uh, it's zoned R2. Can we do a duplex? And I said, well, yeah, you know, will there be variances, et cetera? Uh, uh, do you mind if I come and take a look at it first? So I ended up getting out there. <clears throat> and like I mentioned, uh, he was thinking the, you know, make it two suites, a main floor suite and a second floor suite, two suites, two rents, double cash flow. Uh, but once I looked at, uh, took a look at it, I realized that, you know, the floor was only about 600 square feet. Uh, so, you know, you add up the basement, the main floor and the second floor, uh, which the basement was planning to be part of the main floor. And this basically fit the criteria for the 33% rule, but also the less than 800 square foot for a secondary suite. <clears throat> So I asked him, well, why do you need to do a duplex? Uh, you know, we, we came down looked at it, uh, came up with a sketch and we settled on a two bed, one bathroom, each suite, the main floor and basement floor unit would be one. And the secondary suite would be the, basically the whole second floor. Uh, this looks like it's a bit out of order, but, uh, here was the existing basement. And then the basement rental was still an unfinished basement with just washer dryer. Uh, the main floor, uh, like I said, was basically gutted. There was basically one uh, uh, interior wall that was bearing and supporting the floor joists, and then a couple small walls, uh, and then this porch area to the right. We ended up converting that to a two-bedroom, one-bathroom with a galley kitchen, and then we made a bit of a common space right at the existing front entry, which uh, we, we put a wall to have a door to each suite. <clears throat> the second floor had a couple walls as well, which we mostly took down and added a two bedroom, one bathroom, uh, uh, open kitchen, living, dining area, uh, as well as a mechanical closet for hot water tank and HRP. With secondary suites and, and just like with duplex renovations, as soon as you add a suite, the city will flag you to, add, to have an HRV minimum, which will provide fresh ventilation. The existing houses do not need it. Uh, for instance, that triplex example, we only needed to put an HRV in that third added suite. <clears throat> so a little summary, uh, secondary suite versus the duplex. So the time expected to start was really, we'll, we'll, we'll say it all. We just had to get permit drawings ready. We didn't have any variance process. We didn't have any potential uh, uh, delays with board of adjustment meetings or appeal meetings. Uh, and the biggest is the potential to be shut down because at appeal meetings, you may lose and you may not be able to do what you wanna do. Uh, so this whole duplex process, if we went that route, could have taken you know four to five months of appeal, if that, plus having the permit drawings finalized. I think we were able to get the permit drawings done in about three weeks and he was ready to go, applied for his building permit, off to the races. Uh, this is very critical, especially when you have, uh, you know, say a, 
uh, a possession date or uh, taking possession and you're not cash flowing off rents or, or even breaking even off rents, getting started as soon as possible is very key in uh, real estate investing. Uh, <clears throat> So just some more uh, summary of the secondary suite versus duplex. Uh, there is no variances, no board of adjustment meetings, no delays. We only needed the smoke barrier and the STC 43 and just needed permit drawings and constructions uh, started uh, as soon as we got our uh, uh, permit application. For a duplex, we would have the variance for lot area to allow the two family home. We would have had to come up with a very tricky detail in the existing home for a continuous fire rating and STC 50. And then we would have to get the permit drawings and, and then construction start. Um, this looks to be a duplicated slide. Uh, here is a picture of the final product when it was all done. Uh, the investor did allow me to come back and visit the site throughout construction and uh, at the end to see what it looked like. Uh, and that's all. I, I hope that uh, shared some insight on duplexes for secondary suites and some multifamily developments for you. Um, I'll leave it up to questions. Well, I know we had uh, a couple of hands up, but I actually was taking notes in that and had a question myself. Um, so I guess I'll lead off while we wait for uh, some of the folks to type their questions in. Sure. Um, so Stephen, um, given that the, uh, you know, the, the secondary suites are permitted in all R1 and R2s. Is it possible to take an existing legal duplex that has an unfinished basement as a, for instance, and then create a secondary suite in that unfinished basement if it meets all the other criteria? So are you suggesting to add a third suite? Yes. Then no. <laughs> So they if it was just a, don't second, let us like a fake triplex then yeah yeah no uh <laughs> i've you know what you didn't hear this from me but you know if the city didn't know about that second suite on the second floor for instance and you were doing the <laughs> basement suite you might get away with it but uh it, typically you're only allowed to do it in uh, as a second airy suite so right. not a third airy suite right okay no, I just, I, I, I just no, thought, no, no. I, Great I, I thought I would ask that question because again, you know what, uh, if, if I could elaborate on that too. So yep. one of the, one of the questions I do get often too is, uh, you know, in side by side duplexes where there's unfinished basements on both sides, people will ask if they could do secondary suites in those and, and believe it or not, but you are not allowed to either, even though it's an R2 property, um, the lot line is shared. The, the city has an additional rule where it does not allow secondary suites in attached buildings like that. Uh, they would expect you to do the conditional use application. However, it looks like there's some provisions in the residential um, infill guidelines to potentially allow secondary suites in those situations. Um, that may not be final for a couple of years, but uh, if, if that does open up, that could be a, a very big, uh, I'll call game changer in the, uh, in, in uh, the real estate investing world. And, and you're saying that was the guidelines that only came out on this like Friday past? Yeah. So um, the, it's, it's a, it's a big document. I'm still going through it all. And there's a bunch of, uh, if you go into the city of Winnipeg website, they do have, some uh, uh, open meetings like every hour, uh, I think three or four days at the Cindy Clausen Center where you could go and learn more, ask questions. Um, <clears throat> and in, within the document, uh, they do talk about the secondary suites being in the uh, uh, semi-attached homes. Okay. Which they talk about aligning the bylaws with it, which would mean that they're potentially considering amending the zoning bylaws to allow for this. But that that may not be till maybe next summer, maybe two summers from now, maybe get shut down, who knows? So yep. uh, it, it is being discussed is what I'm trying to say. Okay, uh, I'll read some of the questions here from the chat. Uh, I'll go in reverse order. Um, do you still require a fire escape, i.e. an outside ladder for a secondary suite? And I'm gonna presume it pertains to like in the home street example where the secondary suite was actually on the second floor. Uh, no. <clears throat> so um, you don't really need a fire escape unless you need a second means of egress, which would typically be for um, if you have a, a sh it's a building code thing. Unless you require two means of egress, you really don't need that fire escape. And secondary suites mostly do not need them. 
uh, you could even get away with multifamilies. I've done a nine plex without a uh, second uh, uh, means of egress. Uh, they each suite had its own individual access. So it's really how you interpret and analyze the building code in those situations. There is also another building code condition where if you have more than uh, one floor of travel to, um, to the, uh, um, the exit at grade, for instance, I did a, <clears throat> I did a triplex conversion for uh, a two and a half story where the half story was uh, turned into livable space uh, because it had like, you know, the four foot walls and sloped up to the ceiling. Um, okay. They, they basically plagued the North end, these buildings <laughs> It was a style of construction back then. And so it was, it was that third floor created this code condition where you don't necessarily need the fire escape. You just need an area of refuge so that if the event of a fire comes, you have a landing uh, for the fire department to save you. So it, it comes down to uh, building code uh, uh, analyzing and, and making sure that you do, you are required for one. Yeah, I was gonna say, I actually have a property where we, we have just that, we have this little micro balcony built out of the third floor because it's it's a fire escape. Yeah, well, it's not really a fire escape, but it's uh, a, sorry, it's a I, very no, refuge, yeah. It's a refuge space. so. It doesn't extend to the ground. Yeah. Yeah, and it doesn't need to by code. The only time you need that uh, second means of egress is if you have a shared common space, really, and uh, have, you know, a shared entry that leads to multiple suites. And then you would have to provide a second means of egress for those suites. Um, <clears throat> so that's why it's kind of critical sometimes to uh, uh, really do a, a good site review of your building with, let's say, a designer or a code consultant and, and see the ramifications because that triplex example, we had uh, a front entry and a side entry. And then what we did was with the side entry, we actually split it into two entries. So that way we didn't have to provide a second means of egress for those two suites because that would have meant us uh, digging the foundation to provide a second means of egress from that basement suite, which was basically uh, uh, not feasible. Right, right. Okay, uh, next question here is, uh, would you know of any government provincial uh, loans or uh, basically funds that are in place to assist in the building of secondary suites? There was, but uh, it hasn't been funded in the last year. It was with Manitoba Housing. Uh, the best way to do is check the Manitoba Housing website. Um, is my screen still being shared, Keith? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna pop that up. Um, <clears throat> they, they have some programs here, uh, our programs. They used to have one for secondary suites. But what you'll find with all their programs, they're not being funded right now. Uh, the government hasn't thrown any money. Um, I think it was under the rental housing, one of these. But uh, if you do find it on here, it's under here somewhere. Um, I, I know several people who did take advantage of it, but you also have to be the homeowner and you go into like a 10-year ten um, deal with the Manitoba housing about... Um, <clears throat> Uh, providing affordable rents and it's affordable to their guidelines, not like the market affordability, but Manitoba housing affordability. Uh, so uh, if you do check the housing website out, they, they may, it's usually April 1st is when they reset the year and you may find those programs starting over again. But for the most part, I understand that they were shut down and not going to be coming back until uh, maybe a change in government or something. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I think that was it for the questions um, that were we in the chat more. box. There's yeah, one please. more here in yeah. the uh, chat box. And it yeah. says, approximately how much to build a secondary suite on a current 700 square foot fam single family home? <laughs> bit open -ended. It's an impossible question to ask is what are the finishes? You know, what, what's the construction type that you're dealing with? Do you have to provide a door? It's, it's too vague of a question to answer. You'd have to get a, a sketch, a plan, and add it quoted by a contractor, unfortunately. Are there any other questions here? All right. Well, thank you, Stephen. Uh, if anyone needs to get in touch with Stephen, um, just under his logo, there is his email address.
Um, I think uh, I think I'll, I'll thank you. And if you need to go attend to family duties now, uh, or or thank feel you. free to stick around. Thank you very much, Stephen. Yeah, no, and uh, yeah, like I said, uh, the city of Winnipeg does have a, a whole tab uh, uh, related to secondary suites. You know, it's uh, I find the most interesting. They change their rules on how to calculate the the areas all the time. Uh, and, you know, I, uh, I submit an uh, application for a uh, permit almost once every two weeks. Uh, where is it? Uh, secondary seats. But if you do want any from more information, there's the City of Winnipeg website here uh, that does provide some information on the application process, zoning and construction. Um, <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, they don't give you great detail or, or provide the, some of the more critical information like how to calculate the areas but it's also a good resource because they do have some comments here about exiting window egress uh, things like that but it's all building code related so uh, yeah but yeah if anyone had questions feel free to reach out to me hey just awesome. um, thank just you while we're waiting for a question um, uh, one of our, our uh, guests online said they'll run between 30 to 60 thousand uh, for a secondary suite, if that helps anybody. Yeah, that sounds about right from what I've heard from uh, yeah. clients. But like yeah. I said, it, it comes down to a lot of factors on what you're building. Uh, yeah. Okay, anything okay. else? Any other questions? Okay, well, I'm going to uh, take back the hosting duties here from Steven. So thank you. Uh, we'll so, see if it actually works here. Right. And then I need to be able to share my screen again. And there we go. And it just popped up. So yes. <laughs> uh, is this for me? No, this is uh, this is for you again, Vern. So uh, good, 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 good. Okay. And why do some people win? Why do some people make things look so easy? So easy. I remember when I got into movies. Uh, it looked so easy. I thought about it all my life. And uh, I retired from the work I was doing. And I figured, well, I'm going to go do a movie now. And a few weeks later, I shoot a movie. Biggest five-day paycheck I got in my lifetime. I kid you not. I thought I was off and gone. Then nothing for two years. And I thought, oh, my goodness. You know, I thought I was off. So I had to go get some coaching some mentoring, start to learn the ins and outs of everything. It takes hustle, people. That's who wins. When you commit yourself to success, that's what it takes to win. That's what it takes to change your destiny and create generational wealth from you downward for generations to come. You consistently take the same action over and over and over and over. Consistently systemize everything. Get yourself some education. Understand what's going on. This was a tremendous presentation. This can add huge value to every one of your projects that fits. Extra value, extra profit. That's what it's all about. Next slide. Do we have another slide there? Okay, this is our Teammate Real Estate Academy membership page. You can see we have many different ways of people joining us. They can join us for a year. Uh, they can join us for like a, uh, just an academic education or a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, or the PhD degree, depending on how serious you want to get about it. Um, and just to... Have, sit down and have a strategy session with any one of the coaches, okay? Whoever invited you tonight, get back to them as quick as you can. Talk to them, okay? Um, next slide. Okay. What you're going to learn is how to find deals, okay? We show you how to find the properties that fit your business model. We show you how to find the money, how to find funding partners, how to negotiate everything, how to write up the offers, everything that you need to know. How to get the money, how to manage the rental. Uh, as Nelson said earlier, all of us are involved with our students, our protégés, and helping them manage their rentals and get started 
and we teach, just make sure they do the same things over and over and over again. Uh, we teach you how to manage the business and learn to be a landlord and take care of people. If you're going to sell it, we help you to sell it. We show you how to refinance it. This is where the magic really happens. When you buy something, fix it, renovate it, refinance it, get all of your money back, all of your money back, the down payment, the credit, the renovation money, and like Nelson said earlier, sometimes we have a little bit of profit on top of that. And then we put a tenant in and they pay it off. There is no sweeter business, I kid you not, there is no sweeter business than that. And you control a property. Uh, we have many prodigies, many students who on their very first deal own a property, have a tenant in, and they're getting positive cash flow every single month, and they have no money in their property. No, none of their own money. That's an infinity return. That's what everyone looks for. We teach you how to do joint ventures. So that you can bring in people who have an interest in doing this and take them under your wing and show them what you're doing. We teach you how to open up operational companies, holding companies. We teach you how to minimize taxes, maximize your leverage, whether it's your skill, your knowledge, your finances, anything. We teach you how to maximize it. And we teach you how to retire from your job. Okay? It's going to take a few rental properties to replace your job income. Does it cost money? It does. Nothing is free. Okay? Will you have to do any work? You're going to do a lot of work, but it's going to be worth it. Okay? It's not like working for $20, $30 an hour. It is not. When you're out looking for properties and you make a deal on a property, I kid you not, when it fits your model of buy, fix, refinance, and rent out, you have added another paycheck to your family. Okay? You want to buy a new car, get a rental property. You're going to score $350, $450 a month, net, net, net. That pays for your car. With credit cards, same thing. Get another rental, it covers your credit card bill. Another one, covers your vacation. Another one could cover anything else you want to buy. So when you look at it that way, you're going to have to get out of your comfort zone. You're going to have to get up off the couch and stop watching me on TV or the movies. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Um, so you're going to have to do some work is what we're saying. Will you get your first de deal done? We guarantee you will get your first deal done. And many of us in the coaching panel up here, we do not stop with one deal. As you saw in student results, we keep working with our students even after that first deal. And you can, and the results speak for themselves. Okay. Next. Okay. Here's all of our contact information. Keith Gordon, myself, Fern Bird, Garrett Fraze, Bishop Guliani, Valen Vergara, and Nelson Camp. These are our current coaches. And right here, we have six coaches and I kid you not, people, we have way over 100 years of experience in investing in real estate. All of these people that you're looking at here, that's what we're bringing to the table. And I mentioned earlier, okay, what is 2020 to you? The COVID, what is it to you? Did it happen to you or did it happen for you to give you an opportunity to change what you've been doing all of your life. Is that getting you where you want to go? Are you going to change your family's destiny doing what you've been doing? Or are you going to take on something new, take advantage of being at home and learn some new skill and come out of this pandemic yelling and screaming, another one of our success stories. This is what we bring to the table, people. Take action now. Make 2020 the year of the COVID 
the year that you took charge of your destiny, be the next investor of the month. That's what we're looking for. Take action. You're going to need an hour a day. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Go look at a property. One hour every day. That's one day a week. Or four days in a month. Or 52 days in a year. Make one offer a month. Do one deal in the next 12 months. And then another one the next year. And it's only one house. One property. One project at a time. That's all it is. And we teach you how to do it as a business. We do not teach you to buy a house, fix it, and sell it, and hope you make money. We don't teach that. We show you how to buy and make your money going in. Make a plan, take action, create your future, book a strategy session now. Take charge of tomorrow, people and attend our next month's meeting, October 26th. I think that wraps it up for now. There's no more questions. I see Dan still has his hand up, but I think Dan's happy. Uh, if there's no further questions, Keith, I think we can wrap it up. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to Stephen for, uh, for the wonderful information tonight. Thank you to all the attendees and to the coaches, and uh, we'll see everybody on October 26th. Have Thank a great you, guys. Night. Have a good night. I can figure out how to end the meeting now. <laughs>